I'm a beatable, I'm a beatable, I'm a beatable. I'm a beatable. Yeah. Even start score. Every time they wanna clash, the wind is kicking through the door. I am a beatable. Chance is running out of stock, and we're running out the clock. I bail once, never stop. I am a beatable. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. I am a beatable. I am a beatable, yeah. I am a beatable. I am a beatable. It's the ninth and final game of week 18 here on the British Basketball League YouTube channel and it promises to be an absolute doozy. The Leicester Riders travel north to take on the Caledonia Gladiators with both team sites fully focused on the playoffs. It's won all so far this season with both teams achieving narrow wins on home court and they may have played on Friday but I guarantee they'll both be mad for this one. To hear Hajat and Kyla Nelson have the pleasure of calling it for you. British Basketball League Championship action at the PlaySport Arena in East Kilbride. Third place is fourth, or plays against fourth, should I say. Caledonia Gladiators will take on the Leicester Riders. And Leicester Riders, they're not much chance of going straight into third place straight away, but a win today will help them in their pursuit of climbing up the table. My name is Tahir Hadja, joined alongside Kyla Nelson. This is game two out of two for us, but it's the final game of a nine-game weekend in the British Basketball League. You looking forward to it, Kyla? I am. They're one on one in the season right now. Both teams are one at home, so it's going to be a tight contest today. Well, let's see if they can break the deadlock one and one. The starting fives are in and starting for the Caledonia Gladiators. Faro Alehodzic will start at centre. Mike Bothwell at the guard spot. Princeton Onwes, Patrick Whelan and Lucas Paliza. For our opponents today on the road, the Riders in their second game of the weekend will line up as follows. Kimmel McKenzie will lead the line. Myron Thomas, Teddy Buckets Allen, Mo Walker and Jaron Holmes and a strong bench for the Riders too. Let's take a little closer at some individual talent starting with Patrick Whelan. Yeah, an experienced guard here, as you can see in the season stats, he averages 15 a game, but against his former club, the Leicester Riders, 19.5 points per game. He'll be ready for this one. Well, let's find out if he can put in a similar performance. Sam Adowu was big in his last game. He was huge versus Plymouth. 20 points, 12 rebounds, double-double in only 20 minutes. And he did it actually most of his scoring in 15, just shows his versatility and his strengths. Well, let's find out how this game's about to unfold. We've got a cracker right here. Rob Padanostro's ready. Gareth Murray in search for his 50th home win as head coach of the Caledonia Gladiators. Right after this break, we will have tip-off.
British Basketball League Championship actions at the Amphitheatre. The Caledonia Gladiators take on the Leicester Riders. Fans on their feet for the beginning of the game between these two tough teams in the league. As Kyla mentioned earlier, 1-1 one and one this season. Riders with the victory 96-90 back in December. And in October, the Gladiators with the one-point win at their home court here in East Kilbride. It's going to be an exciting game. And there's your officials, Chris Dodds, Josh Bowe. And I missed that third one there, so I'll have to tell you who that is a little later on. We're ready to get things started. And I know you're watching us live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel, TikTok and Twitch. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff ahead of this blockbuster fixture to finish a weekend of nine games in round 18 of the British Basketball League Championship. Bartek Krasinski is our final official. As Anna Hodzic and Myra Thomas go up for the tip and the Caledonia will start with the first possession of the game. Anna Hodzic handing the ball off to Patrick Whelan and Bothwell looking down low. No walk and Anna Hodzic battle it out and a rebound now for Teddy Allen. Exciting times in the league when these two teams met in December. Both Mike Bothwell and Teddy Allen made their debuts. Teddy Allen came up big with 32 points in that game. Mike Bothwell, well, he had to show signs of settling in. He only finished with four points personal, but has since then found his way into the starting lineup for the Gladiators. Here is Bothwell. Off the dribble onto the left hand. A little bit of a drought to start for the first two possessions in this one, Kyla. Yeah, definitely, but I like the aggression from Bothwell. He's, he's improving every game. He's getting more opportunities with DeBose out at the right now with injury. Um, I mean, against Newcastle, we had 14 points, so he's starting to find a scoring rhythm as there's a foul on that end. That's right, Teddy Allen trying to split the defenders and blocking foul is called. I believe it will be called on Bothwell. Sideline ball for the Riders, who will be the first team to break the deadlock in this game. Here's Holmes. Mackenzie using the screen. Oh, Walker with the roll, he's wide open, but there's a rejection. Farah Alahodzic protecting his paint. A great block by Alahodzic. Well, I thought there was a wide open dunk or layup there with a great pass by Kimball Mackenzie. Lucas Peliza inside Alahodzic this time, and he goes to the left hand. He'll be successful in drawing first blood. He is successful, and it's been interesting. The last few games I've seen Caledonia really try and give Ali Hodgix the ball early on in the game to get him going. Holmes. Inside to the left hand. Can't get it to go. Rebounded by Whelan. That rolls around the rim and into the hands of Thomas. He's going. Full length of the court and an offensive foul call against Myron Thomas. That'll be his first personal foul. Yeah, a little sloppy to start with, leaving the ball on the rim instead of getting some finishes for both teams. You can tell this game is, is tense and both teams need to win it. So you see it's been a bit of a slow start for scoring. We don't mind a game of chess from now again, do we, Kyla? We don't. Here is Peliza, catch and shoot. That's his shot. A great shooter is Peliza. Made a real difference. As Teddy Allen goes to the basket, he's fouled two shots to come for him. And that's what Teddy Allen does, right? He's aggressive, he can shoot the three, he does everything. But he actually stacks up a lot of his points from getting to the free throw line. He causes you to foul him in so many different ways. Off the dribble, getting to the rim. And he's able to finish his free throws a lot of the time. Elite scorer of the ball. Scoring many different ways. He knocks down the first free throw to get Ryder's first point of the game. Spoke about his debut being against Caledonia Gladiators. <laughs> what did he have in his first British Basketball League game? 32 points, six rebounds, three assists. Let's see. In fact, from a neutral perspective, you want to see something like that again. Absolutely. Princeton on last. 
into the hands of Whelan. The screen comes from Alahodzic. He rolls to the rack. Onwas decides to take it to the bucket. Alahodzic, great space room as the double team comes across to Onwas. Yeah, great job by Onwas recognizing the second defender coming over. The nice little pass to Alahodzic to finish with his left hand. Jaron Holmes' is three is off. Kimmel McKenzie, quick steal. Hands it off somehow to Mo Walker. Don't know if that was poked out into the hands of Walker or if he meant it. He, he'll say he meant it, I think. But that's great body control and second chance opportunities for Leicester from Kimball McKenzie. Adam Hodzic hands it off to Bothwell. Had a bit of space there, but Paliza. I told you early on, that's his shot. That's exactly why, drilling it from downtown. Yeah, that's absolutely his shot right there. Shooting over 43% from the three-point line this season. Thomas's three is no good. Allen. McKenzie will try from the opposite side. Ball just not falling early on here for Leicester. And the ball will go the other way. Riders will have possession. I just think great things happen most of the time when Patrick Willen has the ball in his hand and he's going off different actions and executing. That time he had a turnover, but you love to see the way he runs his team. Walker. Willen comes out to guard Allen. Allen goes downhill. No friendly roll for him there. Inside, Whelan for two. Really strong start for the Gladiators. Great job pushing in transition, a nice little cut through the middle by Whelan there. Static offense here for the Riders, waiting for something to happen. And a foul is called. That was nice work there from Mo Walker, looking to set the screen. Curled off it before actually getting to his final destination. He was open. Kimball McKenzie draws the foul as he goes by the defender. Yeah, and you, you, if you're well, Petr Nostro, you're kind of happy with the ball in Kimball McKenzie's hand a lot of the time. He makes great decisions, especially off the pick and roll, and he drew that foul. Smile on his face right there. Coach Rob inside. Walker, don't jump. Alahodzic lands on him. Nice body control to go out for the fake by Walker. But again, we just spoke about coming off of a pick and roll action. Little throw over the top to cause a foul. It's going to be a great battle between Mo Walker and Ali Hodzic. Two back-to-basket players. Ali Hodzic grew up in Leicester. Played for the Leicester Cannons Basketball Club. And in fact, over uh, previous summers and when he was inactive, he used to train with the Leicester Riders from time to time as Teddy Allen opens his bank account from behind the arc. Yeah, he's come in and just been a great scorer for this Leicester Riders team as we see them keep moving up and up in this league table. Paliza again for three. Nothing but net, Lucas Paliza. Yeah, Leicester need to know their scout, no? Paliza can knock that down at a really high level. Kibble McKenzie dancing with the defender. The reverse layup doesn't fall. Rebound for Alehodzic. Bothwell. On Wes. Whelan to the spin. Foul is called this time. Pat Whelan will go to the line for two shots. That was a great spin. As he drove middle with his left hand, he recognized the help was coming from the middle. So he spanned back to the baseline and was able to get a foul. Well, we're going to take a quick break right now. 12 to 6 the score. Gladiators in control early on.
Gladiators in the lead, 12 to 6 against the Leicester Riders. Caledonia faithful at the PlaySport Arena. There's head coach Gareth Murray, positive start for his team as Patrick Whelan is on the line to shoot two. Riders struggling from the field right now, they're two for 11. As Patrick Whelan puts in point number three for him. This Leicester Riders team really need to rely not only on Teddy Buckers, obviously it's an assumption he's going to score the ball, but what else can everyone do? They're at their best when everyone else gets involved and is productive. Their win against Caledonia, um, the 96-90 win, they had 52 bench points. Kimmel McKenzie, and they can often rely on, misses the layup on Wes. He'll turn it over. A bit of a scrappy start to this game. Yeah, they need to let the let the game come to them a little bit, find a rhythm. They're, they're forcing a few too many things, but like we said, it, the league table is so tense. These games mean a lot. Here's McKenzie. That's another turnover for the Riders. Great read by Bothwell to see that still there. In the corner. Here is Bothwell, two feet in the paint, fade away. Deflected away, TJ Lal. He's going to go all alone, TJ Lal with the layup. Really nice. He kind of left the floor early and was able to hang, a, hang there for a left-handed finish. But if I'm Bothwell, who gave up a pretty good look from the three-point line to then gave him a tougher one with that fade away. I think there's a, a warning given there to Teddy Allen and the riders about touching the ball after it's gone through the hoop. At least the next time they'll do it, there'll be a technical foul for them. On Was, has tripped up on his way out to the three-point line. Ale Hodzic sets the screen, rolls to the basket, strong take for Ale Hodzic. Just a few little bunnies being missed by both teams. And one, or well, I believe the foul was on the floor, we'll check with the referee. Oh no, the basket is good. One shot to come there. Jaron Holmes, you mentioned about other players putting points on the board. Jaron Holmes is definitely one of those guys. Yeah, he definitely is. And I think when he plays well, the rest of the team have an easier job of scoring. He's, he's averaging over 13 points a game. So he's productive for this team, and I like him going downhill and finishing. A man from Detroit. Michigan. Yeah, we saw him a little bit on TV the last week. Been now to present. In his suit, he missed uh, the extra bucket there, though. Spent time at St. Bonds University, NCAA, and Iowa State. Where he averaged 13 points per game as Whelan fires up the three. Rebounded by Allen. Oh, good on the other side of the floor. Kimball McKenzie tries to throw it off the legs of Whelan. Doesn't work that time. Intercepted by Lal. Ryder's got numbers here. Jaron Holmes throws it down with two hands. That's a positive for Leicester, especially the way Kimball McKenzie is all over the floor. Great job by getting that flush down, and both teams need to clean up with their turnovers. Well, despite the... The poor shooting form. The Riders are within two here as Bothwell goes to the left hand. That makes that gap four. Lovely steps into that layup. Really crafty guard. Inside, Odoru, the man of the moment from the Patriots game, TJ Lal. Another player that can heat up for the Riders. Whelan. On Was, back out to Whelan. Foul called on the floor. Wheeland just looks really comfortable with the ball in his hand. He's in no rush. He's playing at his pace, and he's able to create a lot for himself and his teammates. Let's take a look at that foul. And if you're Caledonia, you want to get Teddy Allen in foul trouble. Uh, Teddy Allen, that's his first personal. Myron Thomas has two fouls early on in this game. Connor Washington has checked in for Kimball McKenzie. 
Two minutes 30 remaining in the first. Sideline for the Gladiators. Carl Johnson's also into the game as is Clifton Moore Jr. Jimenez is also lurking in the corner and almost the and one play for Whelan who took a little bit of a knock on that play. Yeah, he definitely got hit on that foul. Good to see him pop back up and keep being aggressive. No easy bucket, says Samadou. Makes you really hard to guard when you can go both ways. A great left-handed drive right there by Patrick. Close to the line. He made the first two free throws for the Gladiators in this game. And there he will make the second. GB International, Patrick Whelan, as we've already mentioned, played at the Riders, former employers, was part of the trophy winning team. And here comes Washington. Conducting the offense. Lol, strong crossover there, trying to find a way to the bucket. He's fouled. Once again, the ball won't fall for the Riders. And his face will show his expression there. Great use of his change of pace by stopping in the middle of the lane, a little cross step, pivot to get the bump. Would I love the M1, I'm sure, but he's on the line for two right now. Riders. Currently one and four from the free throw line. Can he get the second? No, he can't. Missed opportunity. Here's Jimenez. Trying to shake off Washington. Clifton Moore Jr. Trying to find Princeton Onwas, who comes along the baseline, the handoff to him. Skipped across, Pat Whelan for three. Offensive rebound kept alive. Onwas goes inside, Clifton Moore Jr. opens his bank account. Great job elevating right in the middle of that pain, and he likes playing against Leicester too. In the previous game, he had 18.6 rebounds, two blocks, so he'd be ready to play today, and you can see it straight away. Definitely one of the signings of the season, Clifton Moore Jr. Without a doubt, for the Caledonia Gladiators, he's had such a great impact from the off. He's just such a mobile big. He's so versatile, and there's some versatility as we see Lyle hit the three after getting to the free throw line from attacking. Right in the defender's eyes. Big time triple from TJ Lyle. Jimenez, Washington want him to go one way only, and that was to his left. Clifton Moore Jr., pump fake, spinning. Offensive rebound, Cal Johnson. Really, that could have been an M1 play, took a hit to the head there. Yeah, but he's so strong, and he's played this game at such a high level. I mean, he was a part of the GB 2012 Olympics. He knows how to battle inside. Samidou trying to get an offensive rebound on his own, and a foul is called, and it will be called on him. Sideline for the Gladiators. The substitution for the Riders checking in. Blake Bowman, Duke Shelton. Idowu to the bench, and that's his second personal foul, Idowu. He must have got nervous hearing you as the player to watch today. Oh, well. It's a high accolade best to be bestowed upon by Kyla Nelson, the one to watch. Carl Jimenez, team foul trouble uh, for the Leicester Riders. Jimenez is on the line, makes those first three throws. Of course, he attended the Loughborough University basketball program and had a stellar season in Division One, averaging a triple-double. Doing it all, points, rebounds, assists, he was brilliant. Couldn't quite break into the first team for the Riders, but has given, been given the opportunity at the Gladiators to contribute. And that's two for two on the line for him. And the Caledonia Gladiators have opened out to a nine-point lead, 26.6 remaining in the first. I mean, Leicester right now, one for five on the free throw line, whereas Caledonia are 
They're easy points you have to convert in a game like this. Free throws win games, Kyle. I'm sure all of the players that you coach will be hearing that from you. Blake Bowman. His triple's no good. Rebound for Clifton Moore Jr. Chance to put a couple more points on the board. Fraser Malcolm. And that's the end of the first quarter. A positive one for the Caledonia Gladiators. 24 to 15 is the score. Second quarter. Time to see how the Riders will react. Quarter number two at the Play Sport Arena. Riders, they need to improve their scoring. Right now, they're six for 20 in the first quarter compared to the Gladiators. Eight for 18. And only one for five. Oh, well, that's one way to open up your scoring. That's Teddy Allen knocking down another triple. Yeah, he's a dog. He knows the team are down right now, and he can hit that three to bring him closer. Jimenez, foul called against him. He's going to go again to the line for two. Caledonia have done a really good job so far drawing fouls. Nice little floater there, and even just a hit on the arm is enough to call it right there. Shelton, you can't think, but he could have maybe stood strong, both hands up, jumped high, and made it even tougher, and then not. You know, fly out to the defender, hit him on the arm. Jimenez gets the home luck. Yeah, Shelton just needs to say disciplined in that moment defensively. He has the advantage there with Jimenez trying to hit a floater from outside the key. You don't need to run out to that. Well, Jimenez has four points now, making them both on the free throw line. He's, at a um, he's above his season average already. Long. Big rebound for Shelton on the other end. Goes to the reverse, no good for him. Whelan pushing the ball up the floor. Johnson tries to find Clifton Moore Jr. as a last-inch attempt on the pass. And a foul is called. Yeah, it'll be called on Jimenez that time. Trying to slow down the offense of the Riders. Nine minutes, 11. Referees having a quick discussion here. Just 
checking where the ball will be. Foul was in the backcourt, Blake Bowman to inbound. Washington. Back in the hands of Allen. Dancing away with Fraser. Malcolm all the way to the bucket is one of those kind of nights. Yes, it is one of those nights. There were four Caledonia gladi gladiators inside of the key there. But his ability to change the pace of his steps and the length of his steps allowed him to get through all of them to finish. And a turnover now for the gladiators. This is working in Ryder's favour. Check this out. I thought the clubs were closed on a Sunday night. Teddy Allen's going dancing. Stepping for sure. Sierra, one, two, step. That's the song that came into my head right then. <laughs> oh, Teddy Allen. Wow, from behind the bucket. That's no good for him. Jimenez. Clifton Moore Jr. mid-range. Nice little elevation there. And he's a tall, athletic forward that has the ability to make that 15-foot jump shot. Of course, both Myron Thomas and Sam Edoru have got two fouls each. Duke Shelton is going to have to battle with him as Blake Bowman rattles in a triple. Kind of made something out of nothing there. A great pass that ended up in Bowman's hand and he knocked it down. Five-point game now. And this is what Leicester needs is production from bench players, from, from role players. So it gives Teddy Allen a little bit more space to create if everyone else is making shots. Full court pressure now from the Riders. Moore Jr. Spinning away from Shelton. Johnson. Is to the rack and one against Blake Bowman. He's not quite sure how that's a foul. I think Johnson actually created that foul through his steps. If you watch, he goes right into the defender and makes the ref have to call it. He's so strong and has a great ability to control his body. It's Blake Bowman being straight and then that change of direction allowing Blake Bowman's body to open up and make the contact from the side. Yeah, that's just... It's good defence, but it's better offence. And Johnson completes the three-point play. Gladiators had a tough loss on the road against the Newcastle Eagles live on Sky Sports. But they're looking to at least get one victory this weekend. Kimball McKenzie checks back in. Ryder's rotation is almost like clockwork. It is. Um, Coach Paternostra Stro um, clearly has some kind of understanding of who he wants in the game when. And he does a good job rotating them. They've got a lot of players on the bench that produce for them. In line with the Gladiators now. Jimenez looking to inbound here. Oh, bounces over the basket. Jimenez. Keeps that in play with the behind-the-back pass in the corner. Fraser Malcolm, big three. And Never that, give up on the play. And that's a guy that knows his roles. He's able to make open shots. He's a hustler. First game and the first win against Leicester this year. He had 16 points for this gladiator side. Now the timeout called by head coach Rob Paternostro just to try and break up the rhythm of the gladiators. Why is it important to do that, Kyla? If you give someone like the Gladiators who really like and are good at executing offensively in the half court, you give them space to do that, it's going to be a long night for you. If you're this Leicester Riders team, you need to rush Caledonia into making quicker decisions, into rushing their offense, rather than being able to see every option. Gladiators three for eight from behind the arc. 47. A little bit more than four, just under fifty percent from the field, and they're getting second chance points with nineteen rebounds already.
touchdown. Murray drawing it up. Sometimes when coaches are drawing on their on their board, it really does look like they're doodling to its finest description. It's like a child has got caught with the board and the pen. But I, I love seeing Coach um, Murray with this Caledonia team. He was a former player. He's got so much experience with GB. And being a high-level player, a lot of the time helps you transition into the coaching role because you've been in the situations that you're, that you're seeing in your teaching. Of course, recently they added a new assistant coach to the lineup, Dan Petz. As it becomes a Leicester Riders possession. Great coach, Dan Petz, previously worked at the ACB team, Obrodoiro where the other assistant coach, Pablo Vasquez, from the Leicester Riders, is where he's from. They both have a, a great relationship. I actually spent time with Dan Petz coaching on a basketball camp in Spain, in Santiago de Compostela, beach town called Boiro. Dan Petz took me out for a lovely tradition, traditional Galician meal. Had some octopus. OK. <laughs> have to try it. Change it taste to the palate, but it was, it was very nice, I must say, it was lovely. Big shout out to you, Dan Petz, great to see you in the league. Here's Lifton Moore, that rolls around and out, and the foul is called on the floor here. Very stop-start feel to this game. Yeah, we haven't seen the true flow of either team, really, especially this Leicester Riders team that give up another possession by fouling for, on the offensive rebound. Foul called there on Teddy Allen, that's his second personal. Blake Bowman heads to the bench. Good sign for Caledonia getting Teddy Allen in foul trouble early. Great stand from Kimwell McKenzie. Does enough to force the miss from Fraser Malcolm. TJ Lal. Teddy Allen for three. A rebound for Moore Jr. Nice interception there. Aaron Thomas, Euro step in. Can he get the bucket to go? Yes, he can. Nice. That little stutter step hesitation throws the defender right there and he's able to get around him on the left side. Jimenez. And once again, Riders come up with the ball. Foul called on Jimenez. And that will be his second personal foul also. And this is what the riders need to do right now, is continue getting stops and pushing the ball and allowing the multitude of players to, to produce for them and score. Substitutions now. Johnson, Jimenez, and Moore Jr. head to the bench. Long three, good. Another one. Really unselfish play by Teddy Allen there. Um, having a pump fake, seeing the defender come out and being able to hit Lowell, who flushes it for the three. Paliza. Rebound for Thomas. Allen, stop, pop, money. Wow. Leicester Riders, big plays in succession. Means it's a three-point game now, 5.15 on the clock. Teddy Allen. And you, that's too much space for the likes of Teddy, Teddy Allen to dribble down the floor without any pressure and to, to pull up from the three-point line. That's money most of the time. The riders right now are getting it done from the three-point line. 12 points, five rebounds for Allen with just over five minutes to go in the second. Patrick Whelan to the right hand for two. Yeah, he just continued to push that around the corner and got past Kimball McKenzie there. And now two shots to come for Teddy Allen once again. Determined Teddy Allen. And he's a bigger, stronger body right there. So um, it's really easy for him to get downhill and hit bodies. And at some point, Caledonia needs to slow him down. Well, we'll see those free throws right after this break here at the Placeboard Arena. Don't go anywhere.
Coach Rob Paternostro happy with his team's response now. 36 to 31 is the score. But over in the other British Basketball League Championship game, a pivotal one between the Bristol Flyers and the Surrey Scorchers. It finished 81 to 94. Padiat Wang had 25 points, seven rebounds, eight assists. Quinn Cooper had 20 points, six for six from three-point territory. The Surrey Scorchers shooting 51% from behind the arc, 17 triples in that game. And a much needed victory to make the standings even closer and to put even more of a gap between them, Manchester and Plymouth. But Teddy Allen adding to his tally here in East Kilbride, another two points for him. No basket. Offensive foul called. A good stand right there by Lau with the bump of Omwaz. He kind of extended his right elbow a little bit and enough for the ref to call the offensive foul. Also, Princeton Omwaz heads to the bench because I believe that's his third personal foul, Princeton Omwaz. Gladiators dealing with foul trouble of their own. McKenzie. Nice backdoor cut. Teddy Allen, another round one play for Teddy Allen. He's getting to the rack. He's getting to the free throw line. He's knocking them down from behind the arc. This man is on a one-man mission right now. 15 points for him. What can he do? And uh, right now he's saying nothing. But that's great recognition by both himself and Kimball McKenzie there, understanding they're probably going to pressure Teddy Allen off the ball. So that backdoor cut will be open because they're so worried about him catching it from the three-point line as he's three for five in the game right now. Well, it's actually 16 points personal. I'd missed the second free throw that he made. He's about to go 17 points after potentially making this one. There's the scorers for the riders. TJ Lal has made some valuable contributions. Two for three from downtown for him. And it was his triples that kind of got the riders going in this game. It was, and hitting a couple threes opens up the inside of the lane because the gladiators have to come out to these shooters, give them more space for drives and backdoor cuts, as we saw from Allen. Teddy Allen, the former CEBL Can Canadian MVP, signed by the riders. Late on, scoring machine. Ala Hodzic, hand off to Paliza. Step back, long two to beat the buzzer. Gets it to go. Caledonia have the edge once again. Just such a pure shooter. The ability to fade at the end of the shot clock and splash that one in. Allen misses the three. Here's Bothwell. Offensive foul called as he drops the shoulder, shoulder and TJ Lull takes a second charge. Lull has mastered the art of taking charges. His timing on the bump, being able to get in front and be in a legal gardening position before the likes of Bothwell drives, really good job there. His second charge he's taken. His body might be a little sore tomorrow, though. TJ Lull from Cambridge, Ontario. His full name's actually Tajinder Lull. Carleton University, played for the Niagara River Lions, played in Japan in the B1 League for Kyoto Hanaris. Now he's here in the UK, playing for the Leicester Riders. Ale Hodzic drives baseline. Paliza again for three, it's good to go. Lucas Paliza, nothing but net for him. That was just a lovely sequence by the Caledonia Gladiators right there. The screen set, the little bounce pass to Alihodzic. And what I loved by Paliza there, after he passed the ball, he spaced out so fast to get that extra pass. And that, that could have maybe been a foul? I think he extended his leg after landing. And so TJ Law was in his space, in his cylinder. Paliza's foot landed inside of it. It's such a small margin between a foul and, and causing that by extending that leg on the three-point line. Jimenez. Whelan. Nice re-screen there from Ale Hodzic. Clock winding down again. Can Jimenez find us a kick? 
Well, it's kicked out, but not called a kick ball. It's 2.8 seconds on the shot clock. Well, it is actually classed as a kick ball now. The referee's just signaled that, and it's fresh 14 seconds. Two minutes 49 remaining in the half. 41 to 36 the score. Much better second quarter. Whelan, he goes mid-range. Jimenez fighting for the rebound, can't get it. Lal looking forward, finds Holmes. Just fumbled a little bit, he did look like he was trying to shoot it. Now the ball goes inside to Mo Walker, who's triple teamed under the bucket, but it don't matter. Nice recognition by Holmes to see the mismatch with Walker and Jimenez trying his hardest guarding him behind him, but a big seal inside and ability to pivot to the middle and finish, like you said, over three defenders. Pat Wien and trying to find out the Hodgett's inside. Still comes up with the ball. Fraser Malcolm, corner three, catch and shoot. Hand up, it don't matter. He's already hit one from the exact spot today. Once again, puts a six-point gap between these two teams. Holmes gets wheeling in the air. Mo Walker on the baseline, tries to go to the reverse. Who's going to come up with this round? It's the Gladiators. Patrick Whelan throws it up. A blocking foul called on Kimball McKenzie. I think Patrick Whelan may have got kneed in the leg by Kimball there. But a good job just going downhill. Nice little cross hezzy move. Flips it up and now gets to the free throw line. You're very right. Dead leg. Nobody wants one of those during a game. Oh, you don't. You just got to run it off until you don't feel it anymore. He's going to wake up with a nice bruise. It's one of those things you can't really stretch. You do not want to go on a foam roller with because that will definitely hurt too. But well, It's going to hurt tomorrow <laughs> nonetheless. The momentum and adrenaline will keep him going throughout this game. Patrick Wheel into the line. He's got eight points, six rebounds, two assists. A solid start for Patrick, and he, he got to the free throw line early in this game. He's four for four so far. Add to that tally. As you said earlier on, also, not only is he 100% from the line, the rest of the team is too. 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Compared to Riders, four for eight. Back to an eight-point game. McKenzie, long two for him, nothing but net. Yeah, sometimes it seems like McKenzie just was like, oh, I haven't shot the ball in a while. <laughs> Let me come off this and pull up and just do nothing but net, as you said. He's so skilled fundamentally, and he's so smart, as you see him get a tip right there defensively. That was his first two points of the game. He was 0 for 3 before that. Jimenez between the legs, going all the way. Carl Jimenez! And that's what he can do. I feel he's highly underrated in this Gladiators lineup, Jimenez. And a foul has been called against him there. Will be his third personal foul. That's a shame. Oh, I'm glad we get to see this one again. Lovely handles. Said goodbye, Kimball McKenzie. Up and under to finish. And like you said, he is underrated. He has great handles, great fundamentals. And he's been able to produce for a lot of different teams. He's finding his role for Caledonia. Bothwell on three fouls. Onwas on three fouls. Jimenez on three fouls. Aliza's got two. Team foul trouble. Adding up. As Caledonia have amassed the amount of fouls to cause you to be in team foul trouble, which is five. And send your opponents to the line every time as Kimball McKenzie adds two more to his tally. Ada Hodzic ran out of room there, had no one to pass to. Holmes tried to get it into Mo Walker. Kimball McKenzie wanted the ball to go in his direction. Tough pass, really, because Mo Walker's not the fastest guy. 
Yeah, exactly. And again, you, you probably want him to set up inside before you give him the ball. Both teams seem a bit impatient in finding good looks. These passes have to be perfect to get there instead of waiting to see what else comes. Just over 30 seconds. Here's Ale Hodzic. He goes for the hook shot. A rebound is almost there for Walker. Carl Johnson. And again, no basket. And an offensive foul call. Yeah, the crowd is not happy about that one. That's great hustle by Johnson right there. Just too much, according to the referee, um, on Mo Walker, who's a big guy. He fell pretty easily. I, I saw that push in the back, though. You could see that he just shoved him, the forearm, in the back of Walker. Offensive foul. Oh, well, it's not an offensive foul. It's an off-ball foul because possession wasn't in their control after the shot, which means Mo Walker does get two shots. So for those fans who are new to the rules, maybe, you don't get two foul, oh, sorry, two shots uh, if it's an offensive foul. That's the only rule when it comes to team foul trouble. And that, you know, is up for debate. But I, I, I believe it was the right call for the referees to award the two free throws. They're pushing the back after the shot. And there were possession was up for grabs. Substitution checking in with the 27.2 seconds on the board. Riders free throw shooting improving. Four point ball game. Three second differentiation between the scoreboard and the shot clock. Ali Hodzic. Screen for Whelan. Now, Caledonia ball on the end line. And a timeout called by Gareth Murray, a smart timeout really. Nine seconds on the game clock, six seconds on the shot clock, a chance to draw something up here. Every point matters for this Caledonia team. They know Leicester can come out and start making shots really quickly, so they need to capitalise off possessions like a baseline out of bounds. I wonder if we can listen in here to what Coach Gareth Murray is going to draw up. What are you drawing up here, Coach Kyler? I would like something going towards the basket first, like at Ali Hodgett, someone screening or him setting a screen and rolling and, or slipping. But then you have the likes of Patrick Wheeling that can turn the corner to, to hit fadeaway jump shots too. So be interesting which way he goes. Let's see what Gareth Murray can come up with. Well, there's always more games coming up in the British Basketball League. Next Thursday, Gladiators back on Sky Sports against the Surrey Scorchers, who are in phenomenal form. Yeah, Surrey will be feeling good after shooting 17 from 33 from the three. They'll be in a rhythm, and they'll be wanting to shoot that way again. And then the Leicester Riders are next in action next Friday as they take on the Sheffield Sharks. I believe I'll be your commentator for that game. Fraser Malcolm comes off with a quick three, rebounded by Jaron Holmes. Can Ryder put some points on the board here? They try and get a hand in. Holmes, is he on the money? Yes, he is, and that's a huge triple for the Leicester Riders. 47 to 48, he gives a lovely hug from Kimball McKenzie. They're within one point distance now, going into the half-time break. That's beautiful from Jaron Holmes. Big time three to change the momentum for Leicester Riders. He knew that one was going in as soon as he elevated. But what were Caledonia doing with a second to go, leaving him that wide open? Great job to finish the half. More analysis coming up after the half-time break. We'll be back with you in a couple moments' time.
Welcome, British Basketball League Championship action. It's a one-point game between the Caledonia Gladiators and the Leicester Riders. Myself, Ty Hadjah, alongside Kyla Nelson for this one. Kyla, at the beginning of the game, the Leicester Riders didn't look like they were in with a chance, but you know, towards the second quarter, they made a big difference. Yeah, you can never rule the riders out, especially when they start making threes from the perimeter. They finished that half on a 7-0 run, so they found momentum. Well, let's take a look at some stats for you then. Both of these two teams, the rebound battle, Kyla. Yeah, rebounds is a big one. Caledonia have eight offensive rebounds and the turnovers is another one. Caledonia with 10 turnovers. Leicester have converted those to 11 points from those turnovers. Well, from those rebounds, second chance points, seven main points for the Caledonian Gladiators. Riders have made 11 points from turnovers as well for that. Let's take you through the tail of the half. and let you know how this game unfolded. Well, it was all Caledonia Gladiators to get this game started. It was like there was a lid on the rim for the Leicester Riders. But this man, he always finds a way to put the ball in the bucket. He has one job on that team, and that is scoring. TJ Lal also made some valuable contributions in the first half. He had a total of eight points personal. Jaron Holmes has been chipping in seven points, two rebounds for him as well. For the Caledonia Gladiators, Clifton Moore Jr. off the bench, doing a little bit, four points, five rebounds. Teddy Allen totaled 17 points, and he's really been a difference maker for them. He has, and I think Leicester kind of got that run from the defensive end. At first, they allowed Caledonia just to set up in anything without any um, disruption from the defense. Riders have stepped up and started to create steals and turnovers on that end to then get buckets like that from Teddy Allen. Teddy Allen is four for five from the free throw line. Riders didn't start well on the line. They're eight for 12 now. Caledonia are perfect 11 from 11. Lucas Paliza, he's the high-risk scorer for the Gladiators. 11 points from him. And Cal Jimenez has been doing the Lord's work. Six points, four rebounds, two assists. But he's got himself into foul trouble. Jaron Holmes hitting that triple just before the buzzer to make it a one-point game in East Kilbride. Well, look, we've had lots of games happening this weekend, so it's time for you to catch up on the action. We'll be seeing a little later on Leicester taking on the Plymouth City Patriots. But up first, let's see how the Manchester versus Newcastle game went. The steal now, Larry Austin Jr. driving, lays it in for two. Here's <laughs> Robertin inside, Leecher Robertin throwing it down. Nick Lewis inside there, cutting back door. Jab to the right, steps to his left, can't find Robertin. Newcastle out running, 3v2, 4v3. Foul is called, the basket is good. Nick Stampley now going to the left hand, got the extra elevation and one. Floating for a second there, I don't know if he stepped on to foul or what happened. You know what he does, Evan Walsh, he goes head down right to the rack. Evan Walsh back to basket again against Johnson and that's what he's trying to identify, the isolation there between these two, but Johnson got quick hands as he makes the steal and Ricky McGill goes down the other end. William Lee just couldn't catch that right in transition, but Nick Lewis is going to throw it up anyway. Look to the crowd. You know what time it is. Evan Walsh handing it off. Robertin on the buzzer, buzzer beater jam. And now it's Taj Green. Time for him to get up and throw it down. Nice pass to Lawton, and he's going to throw it down again. Back to back jams for Austin Lawton. Evan Walsh, beautiful drive to the basket. Lewis, he has really struggled to get himself going. Evan Walsh with the steal on the lay-in for two. McGill splits the defenders all the way to the rack and five points in quick succession for Ricky McGill. He calls for it back, he said, give me that triple, I need it. He knew he wanted it and he knew he was going to make it. 
And that's the end of that one. The Newcastle Eagles take the victory, but that is not reflective of a highly contested game that we've had here. The Manchester Giants were putting on a show early on in this one, but the Newcastle Eagles have shown their class to see out the game. Well, Bucket's penetrating, going in with a reverse slam, and as the name implies, Teddy Bucket talent getting going early. That's a penetration, Vani LVC Ducha, he'll fire from three. This one's up and nothing but net. Abwood with a rebound, Plymouth trying to extend the lead. Well, no look pass, Vani Spencer, Levi, what a dime! Well, Bucket still has it alive, and somehow, someway, Teddy Bucket talent gets it to drop right back over. Both teams, Walter Wiley goes in and throws it down. Buckets goes in. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Teddy Buckets. Look at the white slate now. Turns it over. Holmes comes up with it, followed by Wiley. Wiley's not gonna take his shots. Holmes throws it down with two hands. He goes up. Whoa. Well, Buckets give it go, going in and making it look B-E-A, beautiful basketball by Teddy Buckets. Leicester leading by four. Holmes going in, too big, too strong, and simply just too good. Not to isolate. Copeland nowhere to go. Well, well, that's close. He was very close to a travel as well. They got numbers now, three on one, look out below, as the alley-oop is connected. LVC coming off one screen, there's the alley -oop. Oh, <laughs> baby! Oh. What a play! Oh, Dusha turns it over, Buckets has got a wide opening. Oh, here comes Teddy Buckets in for the layup. Joe Hart penetrates, finds Mason Faulkner. Wiley struggle from the perimeter, this time he knocks it down. Beating Manchester on the road. Just gave him a glimmer of hope as Atwood goes back door. Beautiful pass, beautiful cut. Buckets off one screen. Finds Byron Thomas, gets the out one. He's going to the free throw line. 2 0 against the Plymouth City Patriots this season in the Burj Bass League. Thomas deep three. Good night to everybody in the city of Leicester. Big time play. And in the end, Leicester Riders win this one 102 to 81 against the Plymouth City Patriots.
There is the coach of the North for the British Basketball League All-Stars game. And there's still time to get your votes in. But let's have a little look at the All-Stars promo. You need to find out more. The game of basketball requires a high level of concentration, advanced physical skills, and a deep knowledge of strategy. It also... It's also an unbeatable fan. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing beats unbeatable basketball. Get it, boys. Nothing beats high flying jumps. Oh <laughs> Nothing beats three pointer from D. Wow. Woo. Nice. Nothing beats selecting your favorite players from the north and south. Nothing beats the best basketball entertainment. Watching the UK's best ballers. The sickest skills in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's the All-Star Games, baby. Unbeatable All-Stars. March 17th, London Copper Box. Woo! Well, you heard the siren at the end of that bit of ding because it's the All-Star Game. Teddy Buckets surely is on your list. Let us know, scan the QR code and vote now. He's on the top of my list. He's on mine too, and he's at the top of the scoring list today with 17 points just at the half. Well, 20 minutes of action will decide who takes the victory between these two teams. Remember, the Leicester Riders lost by one when they played here last and they trail by one at half time but of course lots of time to change their fortunes here comes Kimball McKenzie going for the first bucket on the half oh that can't happen if you're the gladiators in the first defensive possession of the half too easy for McKenzie there both teams will start the game as they or should I say start the half as they started the game as Aleph Hodgett hands it off to the baseline Princeton Onwas a little bit of flair on that one with the spin, but couldn't get the finish to go. Here's Jaron Holmes. Head down for Jaron Holmes. Left layer beats his defender to the rack. It's two straight line drives by the riders this, to start this half. They really come out being aggressive and trying to score. Well, there's the Caledonia Gladiators that started the game brightly. This is the riders. I believe they're one of the first leads of the game. Inside Alahodzic and Mo Walker stood pretty strong there. Foul is called for two. And I think that's where Caledonia are best is when they slow down the pace in the half, execute, get into a ball screen. And Ali Hodgett has been open a lot, rolling to the basket. Tough foul there by Mo Walker, but it does send Ali Hodgett to the line for two. Mo Walker, it's his first personal foul. And he's asking the referee. The referee says that he moved into him. But I'm not quite sure he did from the replay. It kind of looked like Ali Hodgix bounced off of him. Uh, but from the angle, and, and the refs have to call it, this is a physical game. Ali Hodzic to bring the Gladiators back within one. Does just that. Free throws have been a huge part of this Gladiators team. They're still 100% from the line. 13 for 13. Who said it was an unlucky number? Here's Teddy Allen. Bounce pass to Mo Walker, gets Ali Hodzic in the air. Now back to basket with him, he's going to go to work. Walker, offensive rebound, forces Ali Hodzic to bite on the fake. He's biting on everything. He is, he is. He's jumping with Mo Walker. But that's a great job being patient, backing him down and being relentless in the play. He wanted that bucket right there. Mo Walker goes to the line now. Nice little battle down low we're having to start this half. Big thank you to all of our viewers, wherever you're watching, all around the world. Live on TikTok, live on Twitch, and also live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Let us know your thoughts throughout the game in the comment section on the respective platform. Bothwell. 
Paliza, swing through, tries to get a cute little pass inside to Alahodzic, turned over. Jaron Holmes, Teddy Allen, riders are running riot here. They're just causing absolute havoc off the back of the mistakes and missed shots from the Gladiators. They are, they started their run in the first half with threes and now they've got a run with just layups. A much more aggressive style, whereas the Gladiators are a little too cutesy. But a nice finish there by Alahodzic. Hook shot. Old school, I like it. Yeah, inside the paint, eight points for him. Walker. Allen. He'll pick it up here. Shot clock winding down. Wow, deep three out of nowhere. Had time as well. Inside Paliza. And Hodzic tries to tip it. Riders out running again, 2v2. And a, a foul will be called. Blocking foul called by Princeton Onwas. They were hoping it would be an, an offensive foul. And Teddy Allen is calling for the bucket. Yeah, of course he is. Definitely a block for me. I think Onwas was still moving. Was an illegal guarding position in front of Teddy Allen, who changed direction last minute to his left hand. Meaning Onwas was still kind of moving over to try and stop him. Onwas goes to the bench. That's because that's his fourth personal foul. That one hurts if you're the gladiators. And you can hear from this home crowd, they are not happy. Sideline for the riders. In down low to Myron Thomas. He's one on one with Paliza. Tries to pro hop into the paint. Two legs. And there's the finish for Myron Thomas. And that small little bump with his shoulder created enough space to, for him to get that shot up. The last game against Plymouth, he had 19 points. He knows how to score the ball. Bothwell will finish the layup for his fourth point in the game. Allen. Mo Walker. Three ball rattles in and out. He's guaranteed one of those a game. Whelan. Nice hands from Allen. Spins away from Fraser Malcolm. Throws it up to Holmes. Not quite enough bounce, but he gets it to Allen. Behind the back. Finds Myron Thomas in the corner for three. That's off the back of the iron. A little bit of Harlem Globetrotters going on right now. Yeah, everything a little sloppy though. Not getting to the shooter's hand meant he had to go. Um, Myron Thomas had to go find that ball in the corner. Ale Hodzic back onto his left hand. Offensive rebound picked up. Fraser Malcolm can't get the finish. Everything's going inside right now for the Gladiators. Earlier on, they saw some success from behind the arc. Fraser Malcolm, Lucas Paliza. Jaron Holmes knocked away from his possession, but a travel violation is called. And that's what the Riders players will argue. And Clifton Moore Jr. replaces Ale Hodzic. It's been really interesting. We sort of spoke about Leicester being at their best when they have a high amount of bench points and production from others. But right now, Caledonia are leading that statistic with 21 bench points. Pat Nostro. The brains behind the Leicester Riders. The dominant play. Look at these past decade. Stolen away now once again, Jaron Holmes, and that's a foul called on Patrick Whelan. Yeah, his teammates got back um, behind him, so it won't be an unsportsmanlike being the last defender there. It was just too obvious what he was trying to do with that pass, and the Leicester Riders were able to kind of um, tighten inside the pain and get that steal from, from recognising that they're trying to pass it inside there. Picking up steals, picking pockets. Seven steals for the Riders. Mackenzie off the glass and in for two. Nice body control there. Got the bump, was able to fade towards the baseline, away from the basket, but able to get the bank. Bothwell. It was hard to the crossover. 
Foul will be called. Two shots to come. Kimmel McKenzie going backwards. And he literally said to the referee, what am I supposed to do? I got hit in the mouth. He did with that elbow, but a good job by Bothwell just continuing to stay aggressive and find a way to get that foul. Plenty of free throws in this game. And Bothwell adding to that 100% tally. 14 for 14 for the Gladiators. Commentators curse, it kicks in. Ah, I knew it was coming. It was oh, too good dear. to be true. Oh, well, it didn't come from you, did it? It came from <laughs> me. Oh, dear. Mackenzie inside, great pass. Finding Dowu, finishing at the rim for two. Samuel Dowu, that's his first two points. Yeah, perfect bounce pass into the lane to create that space for Dowu to get the two. Just played about five minutes. Dowu in total in this game had foul trouble early on. It'll be interesting to see what Adobu does in the second half because that's when he took over against Plymouth last game. See if the same thing happens today. Holmes. Myron Thomas lining up the triple. He can knock those down. He didn't like the disrespect from Clifton Moore Jr. Didn't like it at all. We're going to take a quick break, but Riders are now in control in the game. A 17-7 quarter for the Leicester Riders. Patrick Whelan, MIA in this quarter so far. He's got 10 points, 9 rebounds total, but he also has 5 turnovers. But he's an important part of this Caledonia team. He's played the most with over 23 minutes. And he's only picked up one foul compared to some of his teammates like Onwaz and Jimenez on 4 and 3. He started the game getting to the free throw line going 6 for 6. It'll be good to see him be aggressive again. Well, the ball is in his hands now. Curls around the screen of Malcolm and Clifton Moore Jr. Trying to get it back, but can't do that. Bothwell, that one. A little bit of luck. Great job stepping up there by Bothwell. Yeah, maybe the offense broke down, but just the simple movement gave Bothwell that lane to get by Holmes right there for the and one. And I think it's Teddy Allen who would have been called for that foul, reaching in. That's his third. Third personal foul for Teddy Allen. But of course, he's got a bit of time before coach thinks about taking him out. McKenzie, beautiful take from Kimball McKenzie. 
lovely body control to finish that off the backboard. And again, good things happen for riders when he's involved in pick and roll action. You're in the Kimball McKenzie fan club, are you? Here's another steal. Jaron Holmes, one on one with Bothwell. Step into the right, cross step uh, across Bothwell. Lovely little Euro right there. Euro stepping to the right side of the basket. Big time play. The gap is at 10 now. The Gladiators led by 11. And now the Riders lead by 10. Check out that fast break difference, though, off the back of those steals. Riders racking up those steals and running the floor on them. Once again here, pushing the pace, Kimball McKenzie. Catch and shoot, Jaron Holmes, and that's off to the right-hand side. Yeah, a bit of a quick shot right there for Leicester, who kind of brought the game back by being aggressive towards the basket. Jaron Holmes has got 11 points. Double digits for him, double digits for McKenzie. And 19.6 rebounds, three steals for Teddy Buckets. Bothwell. A roll to Moore Jr. Bubbles around. Shoot his touch, but Caledonia, every time there's a roller inside the paint, good things happen for them. Good job by Clifton Moore Jr. there to get the finish. They're so much better when they execute rather than go one-on-one. -on -one. Kimmel McKenzie. Back out to Holmes. Penetration there. Tries to float it over the defender. Patrick Whelan hands it off. Fraser Malcolm. Myron Thomas looked to have blocked that. I need to see the replay on that one to see where the foul is there. Yeah, definitely the replay here, as we see, nice pass by Patrick Whelan. Oh, that's a tough angle to see from here. Maybe he jumped towards Fraser Malcolm, and you see Fraser Malcolm flies out of the court, so there must have been contact. Jaron Holmes heads to the bench, TJ Law back into the game. Duke Shelton is also readying himself. As we, he will replace Myron Thomas. Thomas has three personal fouls. Two minutes, 12 remaining here in the third. Fraser Malcolm's had a nice game today. Already above his season average of four points a game with six. Hit two big threes in the first half and it's good to see him at the line. Oh, this is that one. Still blame you, since you said about the commentators, guys. <laughs> Still your fault. Listen, listen, you can't blame me. I'm not on the court. I'm not in the arena. 100% for a long time. <laughs> and that's how Leicester riders have turned the game around, getting disruptive stops and getting into Caledonia to not allow them to set up their offense. But also being confident enough uh, to go straight to the bucket not afraid of the contact, get themselves to the free throw lines as well, because they know the referees are quick to blow their whistle in this game. Yeah, getting really direct drives to the lane, and it causes the refs having to make those foul calls just from the aggression of the riders. Lisa heads to the bench. 17 total team fouls for this Caledonia team so far. Lisa has three personal fouls himself. Coach Murray trying to gather his thoughts. Teddy Allen just trying to gather more points. He's got 20 now. Just slowly starts to add to his scoring stats. Has a few free throws a quarter, gets a couple buckets, and all of a sudden he's got 20 points. Did you notice that, by the way? He touches his left ear every time he shoots a free throw. Next time we see him on the line, you'll see it. Superstitious. Superstitious guy, yeah. He does run into the basket before every game. Another steal for Teddy Allen behind the back. Pulls up for the three. Teddy Allen territory. 
Why not? I mean, not only is he scoring at a really high level, top of the British Basketball League, but he did the same thing in Canada, in the Canadian um, Summer League, where he, he was named MVP, just from being such a scorer on all three levels. Carl Johnson airboards that. Allen again. What's he going to do next? He's going to close to airball that one as well. The thing is about Teddy Allen is he doesn't care. He will shoot the next one anyway. Nice he, transition he, right yeah, there. Though. He's got the ultimate green light. Oh, he does. And, and that's what a shooter needs to be like. Next shot, next possession, not worrying about what just happened. But the good thing for Caledonia is getting a quick shot like that. A quick bucket by Fraser Malcolm. McKenzie. Duke Shelton. I don't think I've ever seen him shoot a three-point shot. It didn't look extremely comfortable for no, him there. No, the I term is not aesthetically <laughs> pleasing, right? His teammates looked kind of confused by that shot. <laughs> Bro, it's the same look on my face right now. Pat Whelan, though, he's used to scoring threes. And he heard you, I think, as we said, he was being a little bit quiet in this third quarter. And that's a great way for him to get going, knocking down the three. McKenzie. To the corner. Lau. Trying to find a way to the bucket, he does that. Samidou, offensive rebound, finish for two. Nice job, crashing the boards and getting that little hook over the middle. Johnson blocked at the rim, but a foul is called. I love the intent by Johnson there, though. He's not just going up for a lap, he's going for a dunk, and it causes um, Samuel, excuse me, Samuel to come over and cause a foul. Not quite sure about that call again. It'd be interesting to see that replay a little bit slower. If we can do that. Let's have a look. A little bit slower here. Let's get to this point. Oh, ball. It catches on on the other side. We wouldn't be able to tell without the angle. Yeah, that's a tough angle to see. But just the intent of Johnson makes the ref have to call that. Oh, yeah, just because he intended to dunk it, Kyla. No, I, the I aggression, know what you mean. I mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, <laughs> Kyla. I'm winding you up. These refs only see it in, in one time and one speed, OK? Wow, Jared Holmes has been playing one speed all game, and that is 100 mile an hour as he goes down the opposite side of the floor. That's the end of the third quarter. It is still... a close game between these two teams, but Leicester Riders have the advantage. We'll be back right after this short interval.
fourth and final court at the Play Sport Arena. The Leicester Riders come in like the DVLA. They've got 11 steals and they're taking their tax in the form of points from turnovers. 18 points from those turnovers and steals for the Leicester Riders. I've paid my MOT and tax. They'll come for me, DVLA. Here's Jaron Holmes. Five second violation call. You don't see many of those, Kyla. You don't see it at the professional level very often. I guess it's cre it must be credit to the Caledonia defense. Realizing he's picked the ball up, so everyone else has to deny their player from getting to the uh, getting the ball. Eight point game at the beginning of this fourth. It's swung to and fro. Caledonia 24-15 start. Riders then. A 32 to 24 second quarter, 28 to 19 big third quarter. Caledonia need to get their act together if they've got any hope of winning this game. And or will it go right down to the wire just like the last one? And they can get back into it with the likes of Patch and Wheeling creating, raising up in the air from the free throw line and nice little touch pass to finish. Now they'll get the ball back, Caledonia. Chance to close the gap even further. Here's TJ Lal going downhill, and he just spills the ball there. His hands must be cold. That's why he had a turnover right there. Uh, uh, what are you trying to say about the weather in Scotland? What are you trying to say? Here is Fraser Malcolm. Trying to find a pass to Bothwell. Left hand finish, finger roll to the rim. Shifty crossover right there and getting all the way to the rim to finish for two. McKenzie calling the offense. Sends TJ Law the opposite side. Sam Adowu, I think that's what he's looking at here. In fact, Duke Shelton, pump fake, back to basket against Clifton Moore Jr. Loses the ball again for the Riders. Bothwell spins away from Shelton. Three ball, this is huge. Doesn't go. Riders, yeah, they get away with that. They do. Johnson would definitely want that three-point shot back to bring the game to one. McKenzie. Three the other side of the floor, though. That's not what Caledonia wanted. Oh, that one hurts for Caledonia. But McKenzie's doing a really good job. 13 points personal right now. Is a Malcolm. Carl Johnson was jumping underneath the basket earlier on. He was wide open. Bothwell decided he's going to try and find a different look. Clifton Moore Jr. That's not a better look than having a wide open Carl Johnson under the bucket. TJ Lal almost secures another triple. Razor Malcolm, turn in the corner, go into the bucket, foul is called. Foul called on Duke Shelton. Nice job by Fraser Malcolm there, splitting the two and able to try and elevate up and enough contact to call the foul. He goes to the line. Gladiators no longer 100%. But they are 17 for 20 from the free throw line. That's a lot of trips. Yeah, they've been really effective going downhill and drawing fouls throughout the game. Just easy points to add to their tally and get them back into it. Fraser Malcolm, two for two. He missed his first two free throws of the game. Now enters double digits with 10 points of his own. Really good to see him do well, being a, a local guy that's kind of grew up in, the, in this environment up in Scotland. Mackenzie, Jaron Holmes, jab, drive to the right hand. That's trademark Jaron Holmes, that jab. Yeah, that was a hard jab to the baseline that you have to respect, because if you don't, he's going. He was able to get back to the middle for his finish. Jimenez. 
finds Kyle Johnson. Step back mid-range, Kyle Johnson. Jaron Holmes picks it up. Yeah, that's just not how Caledonia are going to get back into this game. A one-on-one -on -one step back jump shots. They're so good when they move the ball and execute. Jaron Holmes again. This time floating it over with his right hand. He's taken over from all places on the floor today. That's 13 points for him right now. And two shots to come on the opposite end of the floor. Two more free throws. Getting to the free throw line in this fourth is, is a great idea for Caledonia. Not only does it give you easy points to add to get back into the game, but it stops the clock. And time is of the essence when you're down nine to Leicester Riders in the fourth quarter. I, for one, don't want to see any more free throws, but I understand your point, Kyla. I don't think Caledonia fans will no, no, be mad listen, at Listen, <laughs> any which way, put points on the board. I understand it. I like to see free flow in basketball. Rob Panostra clearly does too. And here is Carl Johnson. Yeah, Johnson this year only 55% from the free throw line. But he makes that one. Can he get the second? Yes, he can. More than 55% for Carl Johnson there. The man from Toronto in Canada has had a long and stealthy career. Played at Long Island University, he's playing in Greece, in Italy, Canada, France, Iceland. You know, he has traveled the world well and truly with the game of basketball. Also been as you mentioned, a representative of the GB national team. And guess what to hear? Another trip to the free throw line yeah. for Caledonia right here. That's it. Kimball McKenzie having a convo with the referee. Teddy Allen says, come on, Kimball, get on with it. Yeah, there's a couple of fouls he hasn't agreed with on this end of the floor. But on the other end, I love that little stop and pop from the elbow from Kimball McKenzie. He just said he just watched Jimenez go by him and, and, and splash the mid-range. Jimenez makes that. Yeah, lots of fouls being called. And you see lots of different players that are in foul trouble towards the end of the game. Yeah, Samadowu. He has four, Teddy Allen three, Myron Thomas three, Kimball McKenzie three, Carl Jimenez three, Peliza three, Bothwell three, Onwas four, the list goes on. But here is Teddy Allen. Oh, off the glass, that's a tough bucket. Really tough, and the control of that, he's not going at a fast pace because he doesn't need to. He knows his strengths and his ability to finish around contact. It's really enough unorthodox the way he finishes around the rim. Sometimes it just does not look possible that the ball's going to go in, but he finds a way of rearranging his body into a position or putting the ball off the glass with a certain amount of spin. Ah, oh, there's another offensive rebound here, Paliza. That's what the Caledonian Gladiators need. And if you get an offensive rebound, you don't want to get him tipped out to Feliza for the three. Great job creating second chance opportunities with this Gladiators team. Four for seven for Lucas Feliza from behind the arc. Jaron Holmes finds a way. Oh, blocked by Clifton Moore Jr. Teddy Allen now. He's going to go to the rack. Teddy Allen's not going to be rejected. Great job of keeping control by Teddy Allen, but Gladiators needed that offensive board right there. Whelan, calling for Clifton Moore Jr. Come and help get me open. Patrick Whelan gets to the bucket. Two shots to come, Kyla. And the, the Gladiators are slowly coming back in this game by this foul trouble and being able to get to the line and knock them down. And eventually, hopefully, if they keep being aggressive, they'll put themselves into the bonus, which means there might be a lot of time left in this game. Well, free throw number 27 and 28 coming up right after this break for the Caledonia Gladiators.
coach Gareth Murray. Looks to the court where Patrick Whelan is shooting two free throws. There's the first. Yeah, great free throw shooter at 83%, so really reliable from the line. Patrick Whelan, born in Manchester, out of the Manchester Magic program, played for William Jewell College in NCAA Division II before playing Leb Silver for Real Murcia Baloncesto in Spain, helped them get promoted to Leb Gold, joined the Riders, played in Canada, and now is with the Caledonia Gladiators. TJ Lal skipping his way to the bucket. Nice second step there, bringing the ball with him on his left foot to be able to finish with his right hand. Wheeling from the elbow, dumps it off inside to Moore Jr. Kimmel McKenzie will put his hand up for that one, and that'll be team foul trouble. So lots of free throws yet to come. That's the second dump off in the air that Patrick Whelan has had, and that's because he's such a threat from the mid-range pull-up. They step up when he pulls up, and he's got the IQ to be able to find twice now Clifton Moore Jr. cutting towards the basket. And that'll be the fourth personal foul for Kimball McKenzie. Look at that foul trouble for the Riders. Well, it's 3.49 remaining in the game. It shouldn't have too much of an effect. Yeah, those players just need to be smart, knowing they've got four fouls. That they're a big part of this Leicester Riders team and a reason why they came back. So they just have to play with their heads rather than battling for everything. Moore Jr. makes it count. Seven-point game. Stolen. Moore Jr. slips on the floor. And it, it is a Caledonia ball. Yeah, it's a shame he slipped right there. They had an advantage going down, but he still created an extra possession for this Gladiators. Not quite sure why that turnover happened. What are they thinking here? Trying to get into Mo Walker. Kimball McKenzie just doing enough to deflect it away. Yeah, Kimball doesn't care that he has four fouls. He still gets involved, finds ways to be around the ball. Onwas. He has got four fouls. Gladiators get it in. Belize are threatened to shoot. Jimenez. Kept alive. The deflection. Kind of dribbling into the middle of nowhere, though, Jimenez. Yeah, it was a really rounded drive. If you look at the comparison of Leicester going downhill and direct, whereas that drive right there by Jimenez was outside the key, and he allowed McKenzie to push him towards the corner. He's looking for the inbound. Moore Jr. Peliza. I really like that play right there. Great job by Onwaz. Setting one screen for Peliza to go away and then turning around to set another one for him to hammer back around for that three point shot. As you see, he turns around, hits him, and he gets the call for that foul. Wow, two shots to come. Houston on west of the line, Jaron Holmes checking in to replace Myron Thomas. Yeah, that happens because Thomas is so worried about Pulitzer's uh, ability to shoot the three. He really wanted to chase through it, but instead he went right through on west. Princeton on west returning for his second campaign with the Gladiators after winning some silverware last year. This is the second of those free throws, six-point game. This game slowly coming to its conclusion. McKenzie, corner with Lal. Sidestep, mid-range, TJ Lal, no good, rebound for Onwas. And that's what Omas can do, is rebound both ends of the floor. Because of foul trouble, he hasn't been playing his usual minutes. We'll see what he can do in his last three minutes. Patrick Whelan had a good look at the three there. Offensive rebound, Clifton Moore Jr. skipped out. Lucas Pelize has got a great look at the three, and he knocks it down. Time out called by Rob Padanostro, because it's a three-point ball game. 87 to 90 is the scores on the doors, and the Caledonia Gladiators are slowly trying to turn this game around. They lead this... Fourth and final quarter, 20 to 15. 
and riders are in danger of losing that lead. Big time play from Lucas Paliza. That's who you want shooting the ball at this time of the game, right? Great job by him. It's 17 points personal, and he's five for eight from the three. That's 62%. The man from the Czech Republic, Ostrava. He's also had a, a strong career. Played plenty of times for BK Nova Hot Ostrava, his home club. Played in Nimburg. Played for Medi Beirut in Germany as well. In Poland, Klevitsa. And also back in the Czech Republic. But with Prosteov before returning to Nimba and finally his destination at the Caledonia Gladiators a veteran ball player that knows how to get it done Czech Republic international won plenty of trophies in the Czech Republican League As we get this game back on the way. As we've mentioned, it's been quite a stop-start affair this game. But as we come to the final moments, only a tactical battle. Oh, Kimball McKenzie throwing up the circus shot there for three. And the foul is called. Only Caledonia's first foul of this quarter. The whole quarter. Teddy Allen, Idowu, TJ Lal in the corner for three. Misses that one, Princeton on West with the rebound. The crowd erupts, a roar from the Gladiators fans. Can their team break level or go close by one? Inside, Clifton Moore Jr. It's a one-point ball game again, deja vu. This is from the last time these two teams played. And who had the ball in their hands at this clutch moment? It's Patrick Rillin seeing the double team come and a nice bounce pass down to Clifton Moore Jr. for the finish. Blocking foul called here on the other end. Clifton Moore Jr. Composure to finish that one under the contest. Jaron Holmes ready to inbound now into Teddy Allen. Oh no, Teddy Allen has slipped. Both players with their hands on the ball. Held ball. And I believe that's a Caledonia possession. They're getting the rub of the green here. Omas has just been great since he's come off back off the bench from being in foul trouble. Guarding Teddy Allen there. He slips and he's able to jump on that for a jump ball. Here we go. Two minutes. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You better lock in. This is the British Basketball League Championship. Live on Twitch, live on TikTok, live on the YouTube. This game looks like it's going to end in a thriller. Clifton Moore Jr. fades away. He does it again. Caledonia by one. Feeling it over the smaller defender of Lowe right there and was able to elevate in the middle, get a nice little touch for the swish. How will the riders respond? Jaron Holmes. Caught in a trap here. McKenzie. And the foul is called against Carl Jimenez as Caledonia begin to rack up the fouls. That's the fifth and final foul on Carl Jimenez. He'll have to sit down. Get to see that again. Little turnaround, elevate. Nice little follow through right there. An applause for Jimenez as he heads to the bench. He's put in a shift today. Seven points, four rebounds, three assists. McKenzie, Dakar three, McKenzie. Oh, that one's a tough shot right there. He just stopped and popped it and was able to get the swish in for three. Whelan. Going downhill, Patrick Whelan blocked, rejected. Get that out of here, Jaron Holmes. He's on paint protection duty. He's been feeling it since he hit that buzzer beater at the end of the first half, and he's doing it on the other end now with the big rejection.
Here we go. One into play. Great pass that. Patrick Whelan dishing out dimes. He's three assists away now from a triple double. He's got 15 points, 10 rebounds, and seven assists. What a big time play. Idowu, opposite side. He's not shot a three all game, but gets that rebound on TJ Lal. Reaches up, and Patrick Whelan's underneath him. The foul will be called on Patrick Whelan. Oh, that was hard. Patrick Whelan was in box out position, but just the effort of TJ Lal right there to jump and try and get the rebound. From the angle of the ref, it definitely looks like a foul. I think it's because Whelan's moving backwards on it. Yeah. McKenzie, baseline, mid-range. Kimball McKenzie, ice in his veins. You can't let that man come off of a screen to hit a shot from a baseline out of bounds play. He just made a three, you know he's feeling it. Takes him to 20 points personal. And a timeout called in this one, 52.5 seconds. Here's that play, Idowu sets it. Kimball McKenzie rising up, knocking it down. 93 to 95 the score Leicester in control and I'm really looking forward to see how this game will come to an end let us know though in the comments who is your game MVP you've got to pick for both teams because you don't know who's going to win is it Patrick Whelan 15 points 10 rebounds 7 assists but well, you could even look at Clifton Moore Jr., who's got 14.6 for 10 from the field, eight rebounds. You can also look for the Leicester Riders, 20 points, Kimball McKenzie. Teddy Allen's got 28.6 rebounds, five steals. Jaron Holmes, 15 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Those are the main candidates. Let us know who your game MVP is going to be. End line possession for the Gladiators. The crowd are on their feet to get behind the boys in blue. Bothwell. Clifton Moore Jr. sets the screen for Paliza. Catch and shoot for Paliza. That short. They got the right shot. It was off balance. Kept in play now. Kimmel McKenzie. Riders could put the game. A little further out of Caledonia's reach here, and the foul is called the number 10, Princeton Onwes. That's his fifth and final foul. He will now sit. Fraser Malcolm will check in. It's now two shots to the Leicester Riders. That's a tough one for Onwes right there. Kimball McKenzie is just so smart in creating that contact, but when he's on the floor, Onwes does a great job of doing the extra stuff, getting rebounds, finishing. It'll be hard to not have him in his last 30 seconds of the quarter. Kimball McKenzie. I won't say it, but I'll say it, he's not Mr. Free Throw yet. And there's the first of two. He's a guy that's a vet, and these kind of moments don't really phase him, so everyone expects him to make these free throws right now. 30 seconds on the clock. This free throw will make it a four-point game. And he misses it. All right, that one's on me. That, that one's, one's on, on you, <laughs> Kyler. Here comes Bothwell. Horns action. Fraser Malcolm receives a screen from Moore. Moore Jr. sets it for Bothwell. Bothwell, he's holding on to the ball tight here. Step back three for Bothwell. It's no good. Rebounded. Samadou grabs the big defensive rebound. The foul is called to stop the clock. He's going to go to the free throw line now. Bothwell was trying to find a way to create room for that three, but it just wasn't there. There wasn't enough space. A huge stop by the Leicester Riders right there. But to me, Patrick Whelan didn't touch the ball that entire possession for the Caledonia Gladiators. He was sitting on the wing. I think he has to be the one to create at the end of the game after stepping up big in the fourth quarter. Well, Sam Adowu now will fill the wrath of the arena as he makes the first of two on these free throws. He's been quiet, but second half performances is something he does, and he steps up to make that first one. Misses the second, the clock's going to be winding down now. Glads need to push. Bothwell, what's he going with here? Paliza, three, it's no good. A fight for the rebound. The Riders win. The Riders take victory. Kimball McKenzie pumps the air, pumps his fist. Last time they lost on the buzzer. 
The teams will shake hands and riders after trailing early on in this game by 11, they've turned this game on ahead, come to Caledonia, they've done the business this weekend and go 2-0. And, oh. and Rob Paternostro, a few choice words to the referee after the game is done. Taylor two halves really for me. Leicester came out in that second half and was so direct in how they wanted to score the basketball. And I got some crucial stops on the other end. And they got did a great job winning at Caledonia and snatching that 50th win away from Gareth Money, Murray, who, who is still going to have to wait for it. Well, tell us then, Kyla, we all want to know who are you selecting for your player of the game? I do have to shout out Teddy Allen for a great performance with 28 points. But to me today in the fourth quarter, Kemble McKenzie has to take, wow. take the player of the game for me. He does. He just stepped up huge. He had two big shots consecutively. As you see, 21 points, three rebounds, five assists. But you know the big thing for me? Zero turnovers. He had the ball in his hand for a lot of that game and the ability to, to be able to control it and not turn it over once, that's veteran status right there. I absolutely respect your call on that one. A lot of people would have just said Teddy Allen purely because of the stat line. But I think you're right. Kimball McKenzie saw that game out, protected the ball. He wasn't, uh, he didn't, he was 0 for 3 at the beginning of the game. And after going 0 for 3, he didn't miss Oh, he may maybe missed one more shot. He's 8 for 12, he finished up. 2 for 3 from behind the arc overall. A facilitated play on the edge as well. And he did it in foul trouble. He had four early in the fourth and was able to stay out on the floor. Well, let's take a look at the full-time stats in this one. As he, Kimball McKenzie, welcomes... His child there as I well. I miss his child the way he's turning around. <laughs> no turnovers. To, to, listen, McKenzie. the game's over. Don't try and score a three with the baby. <laughs> well, let's take a look at those stats then. Then full-time stats for you in this great contest between the Caledonia Gladiators and the Leicester Riders. What can we see here, Kyla? Oh, I think two-point field goal percentage for Leicester, especially the second half, they were able to get downhill and finish a high percentage. But kind of did a good job on the boards. But the biggest thing was the 11 steals by Leicester riders, being able to generate points from those turnovers. Well, there's the voice of Kyla Nelson taking you through the stats at the end of that one. We've got to have a look at the games over the weekend. The busiest weekend of the British Basketball League Championship is started with a Lions victory over the Sheffield Sharks. Then on Friday, the Leicester Riders took one win out of two against the Plymouth City Patriots. Newcastle Eagles also took one win out of two against the Caledonia Gladiators. The Surrey Scorchers then took their first win of the weekend against the Plymouth City Patriots in a two-point game. The Bristol Flyers took their first loss of the weekend in a two-point difference against the Cheshire Phoenix. Manchester the Giants fall into the Eagles, the Sheffield Sharks fall into the Lions for the second time in the weekend, and the Bristol Flyers falling to the Surrey Scorchers, which really makes a big difference to the table. And the Caledonia Gladiators, what comes up must go down, the Leicester Riders say, as they get the victory 93 to 97 on the road and make a three game series or make third the game out of the four game series, two to one in favor of the Leicester Riders. Let's check out those all important standings then. There you see it. Numbers are changing every week. Surrey Scorchers at 10 and 15, closing in on the Flyers, on the Sharks, distancing from the Manchester Giants and the Plymouth City Patriots. Caledonia Gladiators, 14 and 10. Riders and Eagles both have 13 wins now and hot on the heels of them. The Cheshire Phoenix are only a couple of uh, losses away from those third, fourth and fifth places as well. Of course, the London Lions, they've got to do a lot of uh, bad work to fall into that but they're 26 and 3 at this moment in time. But hey, anything can happen. This is the British Basketball League. That is exactly what it's all about. Well, thank you very much for joining us here at the PlaySport Arena in East Kilbride. There is your player of the game, Kimball McKenzie, pouring in the points. 21 points personal. Last game, his partner messaged us to ask him to bring him the milk. She's there today.
She's there today so she can remind him himself to bring the milk home. And nice to see, you know, former teammates at the end of the game, family and friends. Once the 40 minutes in done, they can all talk it over afterwards and shake hands and be happy. Exactly. There's a lot of respect between these players, especially. But we've got to talk about the Leicester Riders. I, you can never rule them out, especially come playoff time. And they're edging towards the top as they've got more chances next week to hopefully get further up in the table. Well, let's take a look at those fixtures next week. Things can change again. Caledonia versus Surrey. Surrey trying to climb. Caledonia trying to hold on up there. Plymouth City Patriots face off against the Newcastle Eagles. The Riders face the B Braun Sheffield Sharks. On Saturday at 5 o'clock, the Surrey Scorchers take on the Manchester Giants and the Bristol Flyers take on the London Lions. Then finally, on Sunday, Plymouth City Patriots take on the Leicester Riders down in the southwest and the Cheshire Phoenix will welcome the Caledonia Gladiators to Ellesmere Port. Well, all of that action is live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel and on Twitch and on TikTok. That's game two or two done for myself, Ty Hadja and Kyla Nelson. We've had fun. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Make sure you like and subscribe and we will see you next time.